Hello. Have you ever noticed that working with dates is not always fun? I sure have. In fact, I just noticed something like this just a few minutes ago when I had to work on this awesome calc. And uh, as I was working on it, I figured, you know what, why don't I record a quick video? Uh, I figured that uh, some of you guys might find uh, this calculation to be useful. So the calculation we'll be talking about is how to calculate an average of the next n months excluding the current month. DEX happens to have a really nice function that's really useful for this uh, particular scenario. It's called dates add. However, a lot of people struggle with it and have a hard time understanding how it works. So I'm gonna try to uh, break it down in multiple steps so you guys can follow me along. And hopefully if you are struggling with those types of calculations and if you're trying struggling with understanding how dates add works, then hopefully after this video you'll be able to be uh, very comfortable using it in your calculations. So as I said before, the good way to test things, particularly when it comes to dates, because dates could be confusing and it's hard to conceptualize it in your head when you need to spell out uh, this long calculation as you see this written on the screen. So when I create a table, I can, I can uh, test it with hard-coded value and then see if the return table matches to what I would expect. So let's see what I've done here. So I've created a test table and I'm using my dates and period function. And the way dates and period function does, it literally just returns a table of dates. And um, you just need to tell it where does it need to start and then how many periods do you want it to return. So if I want to start on January 1st, then you need to pass January 1st as the second parameter. And then you need to specify how many, you know, what's the number, um, you know, four, five, 21, depending on how many periods you want to go back, you know, forward. So if it's a positive number, it'll go forward in the future. If it's a negative number, it'll go past in the past. It'll go back in the past. And then the last parameter is uh, what kind of interval we're talking about. Are we talking about days, years, months, quarters, and so forth. So in our case, what we want to do is we want to create a table that looks at the current date. Let's say it's in this case, I hard coded July 3rd of 2020. So here you could see July 3rd of 2020. And what I want to do is I want to create a table of dates that start the next, the very first day of the next month and go for four months. So that's exactly what this code does. So let's walk through this. So we say dates and period, right? So that's just the function. It takes, it has to have, it takes a date column. So you have to have a date table. I'm not going to cover this in this video, but I assume that you already know how to create and mark a date table. So the first column date date is the date column of the date table. And now what we need to do is we need to go and find what is the first the beginning of the next month. And the way this works is we have a really awesome function called first date. So what first date does, if you give me any range of dates, any table of dates, it will return the very first date in that table. So it's very convenient. So if I can find a table that starts next month, first date will determine the beginning of that month. So now the question is, okay, how, how am I going to create the table that starts with next month? Well, conveniently, we have a next month function. So what we need to do is, we need to use both of those functions and then next month function also takes a, a date as a parameter. So now I need to pass a date to my next month function. And the way that logic works is the following. I'm creating a filter on all dates. This will return a column with all dates. So because when we are in the chart, we're only seeing whatever the, the selected date is. So if I don't put a filter in, I'm not going to be able to see the following month because chart is filtering for the current month. So for me to be able to see anything outside of the current month, I have to use the, the filter command. So that's what I do here. I say uh, for my next month function, return a column of all dates and then filter all those dates to the current date. So by the time this command is executed, I can only see a table of dates where the date is equal to the current date. And because I created this table as a hard-coded table, uh, just to test out if my logic will work, which I recommend you do, 
I'm hard coding this date. In our case, we're going to be using selected value function, and we don't have to hard code the date. But when you test out, when you're learning DEX, it's very important to break things down just the way I'm doing it here so that you could test it out. Because when you're looking at a complicated formula, it's very hard to debug the whole thing. You want to break it down into the subcomponents, check and test every single subcomponent, and then bring it all back together again. So that's what I'm doing here. So here you could see that I, I found my first date. I found my current date, rather, in a date table. And the reason I could do it is because I put the all filter on it so I could see all of the dates. And now I can filter it to the current day or the one I'm trying to test. Now this function will return the, the next month. So it'll return the whole next month for, for this. So it'll return the entire August of 2020. And then the first date will return me the beginning of August. So, when, so here I have the entire uh, August. And here I have August 1st. Now I'm passing August 1st to dates and periods. So now my dates and period says start with dates, start with August 1st, and go back, go forward, positive number four, for intervals. What's my interval? F four months. And now we could test this. So if you look at the table that it generates, you see that it starts on August 1st, which is what this returns. And if I go to the very bottom of this, and I will have to zoom in, you see that we end up in November 30th, which is exactly four months, four calendar months away from the August 1st. So now you could see that dates and period is a real convenient function, and we can mess around with uh, first date and next month functions to pass it the beginning of the month of the period that we need to be brought back, of the table that we need to be brought back, and then once we know what the date, what that a date is, we can just specify how many periods and what kind of or intervals and what kind of intervals interval that is. Now let's take a look at how I'm using that formula now that I've tested it in the real scenario. So here I have created the average of next four months measure. And I'm gonna be using my calculate command to divide the next four months by four to get my average. And the calculate function takes a filter or a table as a parameter. And all I need to do now is pass that filter as a parameter to the calculate function to get my desired result. So here, I'm using the same function that you saw before. I'm saying dates for the next four months. So this will just return the table of all of the dates for the next four months, excluding the current month. So if I'm pointing, painting the, the data for January, it's going to start on February 1st. So dates and period, that's just the function that returns all of the dates. Uh, it has to take my date function as a parameter. Then I find what the current date is. And the current date is selected value. And then I just pass that value to the next month. So now we have our current date, we have that next month, and then from that next month we extract the first date, and then from that first date we go forward four months, and then we take that value and we divide it by four, whatever it is that we need to average, and then we pass our four months of dates as a parameter. And here you go. Now we're able to calculate the average of the following four months, excluding the current month. As I said, dates could be confusing. Uh, we're lucky that Power BI gives us a lot of date functions. Unfortunately, those functions are not always easy to use and understand. So hopefully, uh, after you have watched this video, you found at least how the three of those functions work. So we looked at dates and period, first date, next month. So those are really good functions to understand and use as you're trying to do manipulation and logic on your dates. Hope you found this video to be informative and interesting, and please come back again soon. Thanks. Bye.